Hello everyone and thank you for joining me. My name is Eugen and today I will be trying to have some fun with a Sailor Pocket Fountain Pen, the Sailor 155. Not 100% sure that the number is correct, however, that is the number that the seller used in the eBay auction that I got it from. As an odd thing, on the actual pen, uh, on the section there is a different number, number 407. I will be honest, I am not 100% sure which number is correct, but I will go uh, by the assumption that the seller knows better than me uh, what it is and I will call it Sailor 155. Please do correct me if I am wrong. As I have mentioned, I purchased the pen from an auction on eBay a couple of months back and I paid around 160 Canadian dollars plus 10 Canadian dollars for shipping. I have no clue if this was a good price or not. Unfortunately, that is the case with all pens. You get it at whatever value they sell it for and it's up to you to decide if it's worth it or not. First thing first, uh, the pen, it's an all fountain pen. A sailor, as far as I know, does not make these fountain pens anymore. So the only way you can uh, get one of these pens is by watching uh, auctions on eBay and hopefully steal one at uh, a price uh, as low as possible. Uh, the pen that I got, it's actually uh, in a pretty good shape. Uh, the barrel when I got it, it was a little bit uh, scratched and uh, banged up and the nib was not in well, the best looking shape. Uh, so I did a little bit of uh, sanding and a little bit of polishing and uh, basically in the end I gave it a second life. As you can see, the pen does come with a metal cap and a metal barrel. Both cap and barrel are striped, um, basically uh, where it's painted in black, uh, there are actual grooves, so it's not smooth to the touch, and as such you get to have a pretty good uh, grip on the pen. At the top of the cap you have uh, basically, I guess you could call it a black jewel as a finial, and uh, at the bottom of the barrel is just flat, uh, no actual finial, it's just uh, the barrel and it's part, basically the finial it's integrated with the design of the barrel. The clip on the pen it's actually pretty good, springy and um, it's basically uh, hinge based. Doing the pocket uh, shirt test, it glides pretty well over the material and once you have it in your pocket, it will stick out pretty much this much. Uh, pretty cool design. And once you remove it from the pocket, there's absolutely no issues. The clip, as you can see, is pretty much uh, one mm, uh, metal piece and um, as such, nothing can snag on your shirt. It's very smooth. Once you remove the cap, uh, the cap, by the way, it's a uh, pull-push type and very smooth. I don't feel uh, scratching uh, the section. I don't know why the section was so banged up when I got it, but um, I don't think the cap is the one that scratched uh, the section in my case. So once you remove the cap, you will be greeted again based on the designs for these pens with a pretty long section and a very short barrel. This pen comes with an 18K WG Sailor number no. 2 uh, nib and it's a beautiful nib. Um, I believe it's, uh, I assume it's plated in rhodium. I'm not 100% sure it, uh, it isn't rhodium or it's something else. And uh, the design of the nib uh, probably looks very similar or very familiar for those of you who have a Pilot Elite. I believe this is the nib uh, that um, Pilot copied uh, in their design. Even though the nib on the Pilot, as you can see, it's a little bit larger and it's actually a 14K gold nib. 
in my case I'm extra fine. Now, because of the pen size, uh, unfortunately, you are unable to use uh, the Sailor normal size converter. And as such, you are forced to either use the cartridges from Sailor or the mini converter that Sailor makes. Unfortunately, I do not have a mini converter. And as such, uh, I am forced to use the cartridges. I already uh, installed the cartridge on my fountain pen. So there won't be um, an inking uh, section for this, uh, for this video, but very simple. Grab the cartridge, push it in, wait a couple of minutes for the ink to get into the nib, and then you're good to go. That's it. Uh, as I was saying about the mini converter, I looked to see if you can find them, and yes, you can find them. However, the prices for those mini converters are um, on the extreme side. The cheapest converter that I found, uh, mini converter that I found for this pen was around 30 Canadian dollars. I believe in, it included shipping. However, 30 Canadian dollars, it's a little bit on the expensive side. All the other ones, uh, auctions from eBay, uh, they were selling the converter at uh, like somewhere around 40 to 50 Canadian dollars. Um, I'll probably wait a little bit longer until I'll uh, get um, the mini converter. In the meantime, I'll just be using the cartridge that it came for. As I mentioned, the um, cap and the barrel are metal and I believe they are stainless steel. And as such, it makes, uh, it gives the pen a really nice uh, weight, uh, weight. Now you can definitely use the pen uh, like this for quick uh, notes, at least I am able to use it by just making it as an extension of my finger without any issues. However, for longer period of, of times, you can definitely pose the pen very nicely and it poses very nice, very deep, pretty much all the way to the, to the section and makes it for a very good size uh, length. Uh, fountain pen and the cool thing about it even though the cap and the barrel are made of metal the way the pen is designed the balance of the pen it's uh, bang on in the middle so from my opinion this pen it's uh, perfect weighted for uh, for writing and probably for drawing as well and uh, this is the fountain pen in a nutshell. Not much else to say about it. Since I already sort of inked my pen, I'll just go into the um, writing sample. Okay, and doing a quick writing sample. First of all, let me try and without the cap. I mean, without being posted and see how uncomfortable it is. So this is, hold on, let me get a good angle. So it's not that uncomfortable to use it uh, unposted, at least uh, I don't find it that uncomfortable. However, I don't think I'll be able to use it for long sessions. Uh, definitely for quick notes works very well. I like it. And this seems to be more of a medium size. I don't know if number two is supposed to be a medium. Uh, I'll be honest, I don't know much about that uh, sizing. On a DB it says number two. And I don't know if uh, previous owner or owners did any work on the nib. However, the good thing about this uh, nib is that the reverse, it's very, uh, the reverse gives me a very fine line. And it should be perfect for drawing um, details. I like it. All right, the nib is actually beautiful. Um, it's smooth, has a little bit of feedback and uh, it makes a little bit of noise just to let you know it's in contact with the page, but it's, uh, it's beautiful to use. I like it. This is 
at this time <laughs> the only sailor fountain pen that I have in my collection and I believe it's the first time I'm actually using a sailor fountain pen and if the nibs are all the same I'll probably um, be looking again into another sailor pen in the future the nib it's uh, soft it bounces quite a lot it doesn't actually um, flex but it does bounce so this pen will be beautiful to use for longer sessions now the way i'm writing and the way i'm drawing uh, i'm fairly uh, light on my hand so i don't think i will ever actually get to to bounce the nib as uh, as it bounces but if your hand is a little bit heavier on the page uh, this nib will be beautiful to use anyway let's look into the drawing and see what this pen can do for today's drawing since i am using a sailor fountain pen i decided to keep it uh, thematic or something like that so basically i was uh, looking into uh, lighthouses there are a couple of lighthouses that i found and there were abandoned uh, lighthouses there was one that I really liked, uh, however, it's in a region of um, the world that um, don't really want to speak about it at this uh, point in time. So the second one that uh, made it on the list was this lighthouse, which I believe it is called St. George Reef uh, Lighthouse. I was reading it, uh, I had it noted on, uh, on a piece of paper. A very interesting lighthouse. I like the way he was looking. Um, I'm not sure how well the sketch will turn out. Um, I don't really do a lot of architecture, but uh, I guess it will match with the pen somehow, more or less. I don't know how good the ink on this pen is. Uh, I don't know. I assume it's some type of sailor blue ink. I don't know much about sailor inks. So uh, hopefully um, this ink will work uh, good on this paper and at the same time it won't smudge. Anyway, so I'll get into the drawing and um, while well, as I'm doing the drawing I'll let you know what I think of this fountain pen. This drawing was actually lots uh, of fun. I did some mistakes here and there, especially some uh, perspective angles. But overall, I'm happy with the end result. Unfortunately, the ink that came with this cartridge that I'm using wasn't the best thing for drawing. I love the blue color, but unfortunately, even dry, it was prone to smudging on this paper. So it was a little bit annoying. However, it uh, reminded me of the drawing that I did uh, with the uh, Keiko fountain pen and uh, when I had similar issues so I embraced that and uh, went back to the solution that I had back then. Embraced the mistakes and washed them away with a little bit of water and a brush. Uh, works wonders and uh, actually made that blue look even more vibrant in my opinion. I actually really really like the end result. So I think I have a new theme that I will be following when doing anything that is remotely close to some type of architecture, especially if I'm using ink cartridges, I will be doing ink washes at the end. Also I think I will keep the lighthouse theme for all sailor fountain pens that I might add to my collection in the future. Regarding the fountain pen, well, there is no secret that personally I am quite in love with the form and shape of these pocket pens. I find them very versatile and almost perfect daily carriers. Well, if I, um, if I would not be too afraid to get them damaged while carrying them, especially since they aren't made anymore and you can't just uh, spring and buy another one whenever you feel like it. Things that I like about the Sailor 155. Well, I gotta start with that nib. It's a jewel in my opinion. Well, at least on my copy. It's smooth, soft and bouncy and fits the pen quite well. No wonder Pilot uh, copied the shape of the nib. Too bad they don't do them in 18K as well. 
Another thing that I really liked about the copy that I have is that even though the nib was more on the medium side, the reverse gave me a very nice thin line, so I ended up using the nib mostly on reverse and uh, deserved the normal, between quotes, side uh, for filling in uh, large areas or for applying darker shades. I love the fact that the cap and the barrel are made out of stainless steel, gives uh, a very nice weight to the pen, even when posted. I like this more than the all plastic platinum pocket fountain pen that I previously reviewed. For those of you who use the clip, you will also like the clip on this pen. Smooth, springy and has the right amount of uh, stiffness. Things that I don't like as much on the Sailor 155. I would have to start with the section. I would have probably preferred it if uh, the section would have been made out of metal as well. Uh, when I got the pen, as I mentioned earlier, uh, it wasn't in the best condition and I had to do some sanding and polishing to the section. This kind of worries me a little bit that the leaf spring inside the cap might scratch the pen in time, but so far everything seems smooth. so. Maybe those scratches were uh, made by some uh, unfortunate accidents from previous owners. Either way, I will keep my eyes on it and uh, be as gentle as possible, but uh, I don't think the cap is the primary suspect for those scratches. The other thing uh, that bugs me a little bit is that while you can find mini converters for these pens, they tend to be quite expensive. As I said, the Minimum price that I found on one of them was 30 Canadian dollars with shipping. That's like a quarter of the price of the actual pen. It's ouch. One small annoying thing uh, that I noticed as I was drawing, if you don't screw in the barrel properly uh, on the section, it tends to actually um, um, uh, unscrew itself. <laughs> I was uh, surprised by it and uh, confused at the same time. But then again, if you screw it in properly, then uh, it actually uh, holds up pretty nicely. Which brings me to another thing that I forgot to mention. Um, the good thing about this pen is that uh, the threads on the barrel are metal, not plastic. So you could be a little bit um, uh, harder on those threads and tighten up as you need to to make sure the barrel doesn't open up. And uh, that is all there is to it. Uh, bottom line, the Sailor, uh, it's a very nice fountain pen in my opinion and I am happy to have it in my collection. With that said, I thank you for joining me and I hope I will catch you next time. I wish you all the best, a wonderful day or night, whatever you are. Take care. Bye.
Thank you.